welcome aboard my 2005 340 Sundancer. I finally got around to putting the video together. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you get something out of it. And I hope you do this job. If you need any help, if you need and have any questions, please feel to contact me. I'm more than willing to help. I'll tell you everything that I know about putting down this floor. I have a background in commercial flooring from 20 years ago. When this product, solid vinyl product like this first came out, it was about 20 years ago, it was fairly new. The improvements and the quality of, of the stuff they have out now, this stuff right here, is, is amazing. You see this stuff, go to a showroom floor and see what they have. Don't look at Pergo or anything like that. Those are not solid vinyl floors. They have, they're made out of uh, composites and, and press wood and things like that. Take, take a look at this vinyl flooring. I don't know why anybody would want to put down real teak unless you've got a lot of money and you really want to uh, have that real wood look. But I'll put this up against anything. It's that good. I absolutely love it. Now, one thing about this floor, it's not for outdoor use. You can't do your deck with it. You can't do the cockpit with it. You surely can do the cabin. And it is... I, I, as you can tell, I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, biggest thing about doing this floor job is preparation, preparation, preparation. Ripping out the carpet, figure on four or five hours of work. Uh, wear some construction gloves, get in there and just start ripping it out. It's glued down, there's a lot of staples, make sure you pull all those staples out. Throw away your hatches, you're not going to need them have to make new ones. You're going to need three quarter inch marine plywood to do that. Get it also a nice piece of uh, quarter inch plywood, something with a nice finish on it for the underside of the hatch. It'll make for a nicer, cleaner job. You're going to have to build the hatches up so they're level with the floor. And when you think they're level, sand them even with the floor. It's going to take you probably a, a good week of nights just to get the floor preparation once you're done, you're done forever. Spend the time. Do it right. Get everything nice and smooth before you start laying down. You'll be glad you did. There's a ground level view. This shows you what good floor preparation will get you. Look how nice that looks. Woohoo! an ant's view. Here's what it looks like from the outside. Your first impressions when you walk down. It really is a nice look. It's not a perfect match to the cabinets, but it's, it's close. And if it was perfect, it might not look that good anyway. It's another tone to it. It's nice. Anybody who sees it, loves it. I've got another person here, a few docks over, same boat, 2003. And uh, he showed his wife, and it looks like I might have a winter project on my hands. <laughs> But this is a really nice, really nice addition. It feels great on your feet. It's super easy to clean. I vacuum it, I sweep it, and I've maybe twice, three times all season, I've taken a damp rag and wiped it down. It's got a beautiful finish on it, requires no waxing. It's nice. First thing, you've got to rip the floor out, rip the carpeting out. And the best way to do that is to get a good Stanley knife, carpet knife, and make long slices in the floor because the carpet's glued down, it's glued down pretty hard. You're not going to be able to rip it out in one piece. It's just too much. Second thing you want to do 
as you get into that is take the hatches, throw them in the garbage. You're not going to need them. These are your hatches right here. These are not the original hatches. Take the original hatches and throw them out. There's a couple reasons why. You'll find out as you pull the carpet out that the carpet is wrapped around the outer edges and inner edges of the hatch. It wraps around the hatch and it wraps around the floor. It's also stapled in along there. Now when you pull that carpet out, you're gonna find yourself with a nice 3 8 inch gap probably all the way around on both sides. Doing a floor like this, you cannot have a big gap because that vinyl floor will have no support. When it goes over the edge, if this, if this is the hatch opening and the vinyl floor comes over, it's gonna sag. It's not gonna work. So, number one, pull the hatches out. Don't waste your time trying to pull the carpet off. Another tr trick you'll find when doing this is that the pull-out couch, the kitchen cabinets, are sat on top of the carpet. That is, the carpet was installed first, and everything was put on top. The large side carpeting here is glued to this panel. The toe kick underneath is also glued. The carpet does not go up on a vertical. It's one piece on the floor with everything sat on top. Now, that being said, I don't know anybody who would want to try and take out these kitchen cabinets. You probably, uh, might be there quite a while doing that. They don't recommend it. So how are you going to get that carpet out from underneath? Well, take a sharp Stanley knife, run it along that edge, making sure you don't cut the toe kick. Same thing along this edge here. Keep cutting back, cutting back. Vacuum up the little pieces you'll get. Keep cutting back until you can't see it. It's not that hard to do, and it's going to make a nice finished job. All right, so then you're almost ready to go. Once you've got everything torn up, you're going to realize why Sea Ray put carpet on the boat. What you're going to find is half inch green plywood with fiberglass resin over the top. And it's not smooth, it's a mountain. It's this gullies. There's gopher hills on it. Anywhere they decided to, to screw into a, uh, a transverse beam or a, a, a bulkhead, they would plug the hole after the screw went in and slap some gel coat over top. More humps. You run your hand over it, you'll see how wavy it is. You cannot put this floor down over that rough flooring. If you try to do that, it's not going to be a nice job. You've got to make this floor smooth. My first idea when doing this was to put an underlayment down, some sort of a quarter inch thick underlayment. Um, that wasn't, I couldn't find anything that would work. And I was worried about it, that I was going to have creaking as I stepped over it, because they still had the gullies there, and I was just bridging them. Not what I wanted to do. I could have put down a thick layer of glue, and put it, sunk that uh, underlayment on top, but it's not what I was looking for. Alright, so what I did was, I got a few belt sanders, 24 grit, maybe 36 grit paper, and I started belt sanding it down. Now, before you do that, make sure you seal everything off with plastic. From the ceiling to the floor, seal your cabinets. Cover the couches, try and make this a sealed room of plastic because you're gonna generate a lot of dust. I used uh, vacuum attachments on the sanders. I still got a lot of dust. And I vacuumed every night when I was done. You're going to generate dust. Make sure you wear a good respirator when doing this also. Now I was lucky that my boat sits in my backyard. I was able to run two vacuums outside with extension cords and extension hoses into here all the time to keep the dust out. I'm making maybe it sound bad. Um, it's not that bad if you stay on top of it. All right, so we threw the hatches out to begin with. Uh, what we're gonna have to do then is make new hatches. What I did was I used Three quarter inch marine plywood. It's three quarter inch marine plywood. And what I did was I backed it up with a piece of quarter inch blue one underneath. Now I haven't finished these off. I have not uh, painted them because I didn't know once the boat went in the water how much expansion I was. 
was going to have and stuff like that. It ended up being zero expansion, no change. I'm ready to paint these. Maybe just sit the light sanding, paint everything with some uh, bilge coat paint. I think it's going to look just fine. Okay, so make your hatches as tight as you can to the opening. What I did was I squared off the openings. I made little round corner templates, sanded everything nice. It wasn't hard to do. Matched up some three quarter inch plywood. So I had at the most an eighth of an inch gap going all the way around. A nice, tight, snug fit. Take your time, it'll be worth the effort. That's what's gonna make you be a nice job at the end. Now what also has to happen is you've gotta make those hatches level with the floor. So while you're sanding, get those hatches made and you can start sanding the hatch with the floor. Now sanding's not enough to get the floor flat. You're still going to get valleys and rolling hills in the floor, so you're going to have to fill those. What I use is Duraglass. It's a uh, fiber reinforced filler that is waterproof, sort of like an automotive uh, auto body filler, what some people call Bondo plastic filler. Uh, it's made by USC, it's green in color, hard as a rock, it's waterproof. So when you get done with the floor, Remember, you were going over fiberglass coated plywood. You've now got another coat of fiber based material, polyester, that is going to make this entire floor waterproof. I think that's important. If I put underlayment down, say quarter inch underlayment plywood, what if I spilled something I'm worried about? It would seep into the floor. There are thin cracks in this floor where they're joined together. You can't see them, but I wouldn't want to put it under water and try it. So I wanted it waterproof. So I sanded it down, I traveled on, took two gallons of the waterproof filler uh, on this floor. Felt sanded it down till it was smooth and I was happy. From there on, it's a piece of cake. From there on, you're just laying the floor. Preparation is everything. Was made by Cardine. At the end of the video, I'll put up the name of what I used and the sizes and the part numbers. I used a glue to put the floor down that could be put down either wet or dry. Dry meaning it would be just tacky before you put it down. It worked out great because there were some small corners, which I'll show you in a little while, that needed to be put in wet. It just made it easier. I could almost butter the back with a little brush, put the piece in, come back the next day, it was set. Um, on the main floor, if you put it in where it's tacky, you'll be better off. If you make a mistake, you can still peel it up, but you don't step on it and readjust what you have to do. Uh, but if you put it down wet, you will probably slide as you worked on it, because you're going to be you're going to be on top of it when you work. Not a lot of room, as we know in these cabins. All right, so then what I did was I basically just, just visual, there's nothing straight in, in these in this cabin. If you look at the cabinets, to the bench, to every cutout, nothing runs parallel to the boat. So like, the way I did it was, believe it or not, the hatches were the most parallel to the center line of the boat. So I kind of lined everything up with the hatches, stood back, gave it a nice visual look, laid it out, moved it. I, I, didn't measure off of anything. I laid it until I got where I wanted, and I, I drew a line down the length. There's my starting point. From there, put the glue down and start working. Now, everybody always wants to know how I did the hatches. How did I get them so tight? You probably can't see the hatches I'm standing on. Two hatches, one forward, one back. It's very simple. And it starts again with preparation, making sure that that hatch opening is nice and square, and that the hatch that you had to make it's nice and level and is very tight fit. Tight, but not so tight you can't get it out. So how I did that was I started out by laying down my, my line. I actually started off the hatch. My first course, first long course. Oh yeah, one more thing, the ladder. If you reach underneath, there are there's a nut and bolt on each side towards the inboard side reach underneath the hatch and unbolt that. The two outer ones are, are big wood screws. Take those out. You can pull the carpet out from underneath. You can move that maybe a quarter of an inch with a pry bar. Don't pry too hard. You can just get it up enough. And then when you put the floor in, you can slide the floor underneath. So that floor goes directly underneath that stanchion right there. Also the table. The table base is under the carpet. So when you take that out, unscrew the table base. Take 
some acetone. You can clean the glue off of that. As you can see, it comes out really nice. Okay, so back to the hatch. So I, you put your first course in. Now your next course is going to come into the hatch. Let's open this guy up. This is the original hatch hardware, by the way. It's on here. What we did was lay that first course that's going to the second course it's going to actually go over the hatch so I'm going to overlap this opening I measured before I put it in and I scribed the line past this piece so this piece came in my line came all the way back here all the way forward and when I was able to do that once I laid that in I was able to pick up the line exactly follow the edge now because I left the gap of about an eighth of an inch all the way around I had a little leeway. Once I got that line checked, double checked, double checked, all you have to do is cut that opening. Real simple to do. If you make a mistake, you've got more material. Take your time with that, give yourself a nice straight line, just a straight edge. You take the waist from that piece, and you lay it on the hatch. And you let it overlap a tiny bit, because you're making up for that that cut you just made. And then when you put it all back together, all you have to do is take a, I took a block hand sander and just slowly shave this edge down until I got it to fit where you could barely see it. Most people, when they put it on, can't even find the hatch. I use a hand roller then to roll everything in. And voila. Okay, so here's a look at the finished product. What it looks like. You look straight down, ignore my feet, you can see where the hatch is, you can see how tight the lines are, let me get down and zoom in on these lines and show you how they are. Alright, there is the, there's your line right there, that's your, that's the hatch line. And I could have probably done a better job, this one's a little wider, see this one here? But the hatch has a little movement to it. And you can even see where they don't perfectly line up, but you just don't notice it. Next hatch is here. You know, step back a little bit, and you can't notice where those lines are. Just out of the way. All right, one final thing here. When you get to the edge, before you go into the aft cabin, you have to do something with the edge here because it's an overhang. So what I did was I just let the vinyl come to the end, cut it off, and I got this piece of molding from the carpet store. And it's a, it's a stick-on piece. And it finishes it off pretty nice. Not a perfect match, but it works well. And I wouldn't do anything more than that. I originally was going to put a piece of half round oak, but it's not, it was too much work. So, and nobody notices it anyway. So, underneath where your toe kick is, as I said before, you, you cut with a knife along the edge here before you install it. Cut it as much as you can. And you can slide that piece of vinyl flooring right up underneath. It only goes up maybe, maybe three-eighths of an inch under, but look, stick my finger in there and it's tucked under there nice. Same thing here on the pullout. This is how we address the corners in the front. All I did here was I cut a, before the well, side of the hull comes up, I just cut a line across. I used some filler to smooth that out, did it by hand, made a template, Cut that piece in there, it's glued in good. Same thing over here. It's butted up against the air conditioning vent up the front of the bunk. There you have it. Hey look, here I am. I'm in the hatch opening. Keep some stuff and keep some sodas, some plastic glasses and things. Usually the 
edge of the hatch here. This is all original. This is the white all original. Now when they made the new hatch, these original these two by twos, whatever is under here, we just they just stapled and nailed in. Not really well done. What they had to do was lay the hatch and the hatch sat too low to the floor. And it wobbled. This side was high, this side was low. This side was high, over here was low. So what I did was I took the hatch and I wrapped saran wrap around it. And I troweled on, this is the Duraglass, this green stuff here. I didn't finish this off real nice only because I ran out of time. But I'll do that this winter and I'll paint everything up nice. But what I did was I troweled on the Duraglass in all the low spots, over here, over here, and I wrapped that hatch, the new hatch, saran wrap, and I pushed it down until everything was level and I let it sit there for about 20 minutes, pulled it up, the saran wrap didn't let it stick to this. Now I had a nice bed that hatch to sit in. Where it was high, above there, what I first did too is I took a router and I did a plunge cut, it's exactly three quarters of an inch, and cut all the way around. So I took out all the highs to begin with. I did that. Set that in there. So there's a little trick might help you along. You can finish this off nicer if you want. When the hatch is down, you don't see it. But I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit this winter. And I'll give it some paint. So there's a little trick I just taught you. Use it. This is a pull-out couch side piece. Here. The carpet goes all the way underneath. So I didn't know what what to do so I figured out if I just got that kind of knife it's nice and sharp keep cutting along this edge cut vacuum cut cut and it gives you enough room in there so when you take your floor and you can slide it under there you don't even have to make a fancy cut you can just kind of make a rough cut glue it slide it under there it makes a nice finished edge you've got the vertical carpet coming right down nice and you can tuck that flooring under there that's another little tip. Use it. Is underneath the ladder coming down from outside into the cabin. These bolts, you lift this hatch up, there's two nuts underneath. You can unscrew that. Over here you've got two screws, two big wood screws. You pull those out. Kind of a pain in the neck, you might need a right angle screwdriver. Get those out of there and you can actually move this. So you can lift this up, get it out of the way, pull the carpet out from underneath, and slide the new flooring right underneath, which is nice because now that ladder is going to hold that flooring down there real good. I never put the two screws back in because, again, I ran out of time, but I'll do it later. <laughs> the table base. This is under the carpet. So when you pull the carpet out, you did all the glue and everything off of it, it unscrews and it's a hole in the bottom this thing sits in. This is really nice when you do this job because you don't have to worry about making a nice cut around the base. You just have to make a cut around that hole, put the base back on, put the wood screws back in. It's pretty cool. Works out nice. So I hope you enjoyed the video. My only regret is that I didn't photograph this from beginning to end when I started. Uh, as you know, we had a cold winter in the, in the uh, Northeast, and I got a late start on this project. I was kind of rushed near the end to finish it before the boat went in. And that's one of the reasons I didn't do the aft cab, and I have enough material to do it. I might just leave it like that, but we'll see what, uh, what this winter brings. What I am going to address is the steps, the four steps going up. We're going to attempt to wrap the vinyl around the steps. Let's see how it works. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. I'm sure to let everybody know. I want to thank everybody at Club C, right? I want to thank all of you for the kind words, uh, for the questions. Please, if you have any more, don't be afraid to contact me. I'll be happy to tell you where I got it. Anything I can do for you would be my pleasure. Thanks.
once again, Club C-Ray. Give it a try. You'll enjoy this one.